With more, we're joined by Hilary Mann Leverett. She's a former White House and State Department official and now a professor at American University, counterproductive, undermining trust. I suppose, is that the, the strongest reaction one can expect from Washington right now? I think it is, but of course it is criticism without content. It really underscores that the United States has taken itself out of the position of being the leader, the presider over a peace process in the Middle East, which is critically important to continue to justify the American role in the Middle East. We need that. America needs that for America's own interests, to rationalize our, our relationships, our interests in the Arab world, the Muslim world, and our interest in Israel. Without that, there's no rationalization, no justification for our role in the Middle East. So we need that for our own reasons. But what Hillary Clinton did today in her what I would call criticism without content is to dramatically underscore how the United States has moved from a position as, ar as arbiter, presider over, over a peace process to a partisan role in the conflict, firmly on Israel's side, with nothing to offer. Didn't that happened ages ago, though. <laughs> well, in a sense, you, we have seen this move happen now for years. But think about even 10 years ago. This year, we've this month of September uh, 2011, we've been um, it's been the commemoration from 9-11 10 years ago. 10 years ago, the Palestinians had no choice. Other powers had no choice. They had to continue to accept an American role that was a pretty feckless one, but still uncontested. Today, the Palestinians have a choice to go to the United Nations. Today, Turkey has a voice. Egypt will increasingly have a voice. Iran has a voice. Other countries increasingly have a voice. And the problem for the United States is, as these other powers, both in the region and outside of the Middle East, increasingly have a voice, the American role gets continuously undercut and weakened, which hurts America worldwide, economically, politically, in security terms. So you still think there's a point, then, in, in pursuing a peace process or a two-state solution? You don't think this, this later settlement activity just underscores the impossibility of ever having a two-state solution and that alternative, perhaps one-state solutions, should be looked into? Well, the United States, I mean, there, there are a couple of issues here, but one is critical. The United States' position up until 1981, from when Israel seized the territory in 1967 until 1981, the U.S. position was, just like the rest of the world, that Israeli settlement activity in occupied territory was illegal, full stop. The United States at that time was able to preside over an effective peace process between Israel and Egypt, armistice agreements between Israel and Syria, Israel and Jordan. We had an effective peace process, and America's credibility and standing in the world, even while it was mired in Vietnam, was still high. What happened in 1981, when the Reagan administration and the neoconservatives came to town, was that position changed. So instead of settlements being illegal, they became unhelpful. And we have never had an effective peace process since then. Hillary Mann Leverett, thank you very much. Thank you.